So welcome to day 15 for our coffee challenge and coffee chat, a uh, coffee challenge. Yeah, it's a coffee challenge some days. It's our manifesting challenge and I'm going to have some coffee because I really haven't finished it yet. And here's to us for Friday. Um, and I committed to doing this 20 days, 22 days live to support you and everybody that's in our manifesting challenge um, to keep us on track, to motivate and help us understand what we're doing. So the first thing that I want to share with you is abracadabra. I was coming back from my walk today and I heard the words abracadabra. And I remember doing a little digging on this word myself. You've probably heard it yourself as a kid. We've heard it in, in shows. And it's the word that's associated with magicians and creating magic. And some unlearned people actually think it's mumbo jumbo or hocus pocus. And actually, abracadabra is an Aramaic name. It originates from the Hebrew word avra, A-V-R-A. Avra means I will create or I create. And kadabra is actually an Aramaic equivalent to the Hebrew word kadobar. It's spelled K-E-D-O-O-B-A-R. And that means to be spoken. It is spoken. Okay. And so together that phrase, it means I will create as has been spoken. And so that's so fitting for the work we're doing and manifesting challenge and being mindful of our words and creating what is it we're creating what are we manifesting what is our challenge here and you know i know that the word in, in doing a little digging here i found out that the word actually was first used in the second century a.d in from a book called liber medicinalis it was written by a roman doctor to the emperor the emperor uh character Kala. And, and what they did was they wrote abracadabra in, in an inverted triangle, the letters, and that was put on an amulet. And that amulet, or um, it is basically a, uh, a token or a magic object, and it was used for incantations, it was used as a, a spell remover or something to protect a person um, from, and actually it was originally used, oh, we got some activity here. So he, yeah, um, it was actually written on the Abra Abraxas stones, it says here. Um, and those were worn as amulets for warriors, but it was also used, it, known in old London during the plague. So let's see, which plague was it? The Great Plague of London. Daniel Defoe wrote about it. And he said that it was posted on the doorways to ward off sickness. Okay, so it was used through time. Alistair Crowley explains in his essay, Gematria, that he discovered the word and he, through Kabbalistic practices. So it was actually abracadabra was repeatedly used in 1904 in the invocation of Horus. So here we go all the way back to Egypt. And that's where they founded the Philema religion, which I didn't go deeper into that. So, you know, today we use the word abracadabra as a magic word. But I think it's come back to me specifically to share with you and remind us how important it is. What are we speaking? What are we thinking? Where is our focus going, right? 
And are we intentionally creating? So we're coming into this awareness. We're actually doing the steps because manifesting, the actual practice of manifesting is a process of clearing obstacles. We're in our practice of the seven days live that's coming up on Monday. That will be the final three days that I'm providing for you as part of our challenge. I will keep up the replays for the whole month, okay? So we're being invited to practice, to consistently, to make it a consistent part of our day and reminder, we're clearing obstacles. And, you know, we're clearing hidden energies, blocks to fears that are preventing us from taking the actions we want, from being able to receive the inspirations that we want, for feeling what it is that we want to get excited again. You know, when we want it, when we're stuck, those are really low vibrations and we don't feel good when we're stuck, right? And it's really crappy energy to be around anybody like that, right? Who wants to be around anyone like that? And, you know, we stop our flow. We stop that whole creative process, you know, the integration of body, mind, and spirit. So in your practice, that is the reason, you know, I've always got the cart before the horse it seems in terms of this work you know I have to slow myself down I was reminded earlier I was born breech so I do kind of things backwards sometimes you know but we're, we're I wanted to just I was challenged myself I was stuck this summer myself and and it was just like okay I need a push and if I need a push what does everybody else out there need we need to get unstuck what we're looking for a reset we're looking for some aspect of our life that's not working. For some of us, there's a lot. Some of us, it's just a couple aspects. You know, I work with a lot of really successful people. And it's not that you're not successful. You had success. It's just that one aspect, all of a sudden you're derailing and you're off track. And so we often need to circle around how to come back to that place that we once knew when we got into that zone, when we were in our flow. And so we're removing the self-doubt, the limiting beliefs, the fear, you know, and the, and what that does is that that raises our confidence. It raises our inspiration, our courage to take the steps, you know, I know I've said it before, I'm okay on a podcast, but this is a real push for me to be on camera, to be here and committed to supporting you for your way. So I'm being pushed into doing something that's feeling uncomfortable, doing something different, doing um, and putting myself out in a way that is vulnerable. And so I sure hope you're feeling uncomfortable too <laughs> in doing your something different, you know? So with that said, I really want to say that, you know, as it's fall time here in the North American continent, um, we are noticing our trees and, and the foliage around us changing. I was witnessing it in the park as, as we had our drought, the leaves are coming back and they're all in their green, but there's other trees now going, hey, it's it's time for us to shed. And we're in a way doing the same thing. We're in this process because I don't think trees drop their leaves. I believe they release their leaves and they're released. They push them off. So in again, coming back day one on Monday morning, we're going to take some deeper steps into releasing what's not working, what we're finished with, we're complete, we learned these lessons, we had these experiences, we had these old ways of doing things, it's time to let them go and bring something else in. So I'm all for, you know, renovating. And uh, so where would you like to reset? How's it going for you, Nicola? Would you like to share? Welcome. Thank you so much for being here with me. It's always nice to have someone else to talk to. <laughs> yes. You and Carly. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm doing good. Um, I was trying to save up something to tell you, and I can't remember exactly what. Oh, now. yeah, I threw you off. I I threw out my abracadabra, and you got turned around. <laughs> um, uh, 
Well, last night, uh, I was getting ready to do the, uh, the day five again, but it's the third time. Each time I've done it, I've, I've checked out in certain parts, just a, one part or another. And um, last night, uh, I, I kind of blanked out completely. <laughs> I heard you start and then I just went somewhere. <laughs> um, but even though I went somewhere, I went into the labyrinth <laughs> in my dream state or whatever that was. And um, uh, when I woke up, hi Carly, hi Carly, <laughs> she's saying it, she's it so was. Um, I I just listened to. I have this background music on, and the background music really calmed me. I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was a deep peace. Something I haven't experienced in a very long time. Now, is this new music? No, I don't know that it's new. It could be. It, it was binaural beats of some. Oh, sort. okay, okay. And so it helped you. Yes, and so that it kind of took me out of the meditation as uh -huh. hearing it, and I just transported me somewhere else. Well, that's exactly right, and that's what a lot of meditations do. They help our spirit if leave depart. Yeah. But but again, you know, so that's all good. I love that, hmm. but. And I don't want to dismiss it. The whole practice, though, is learning how to keep our spirit present. Right. Well, so, so I woke up, and it was like, oh, sorry, woke... sorry, I, I'm, I'm a wee bit lost. Did you say that you were doing this as part of your meditation, or was this just sleeping? Well, I went to sleep. You went to sleep during the practice of your meditation. Right. Okay. So. You were sitting up or you were laying down? I was sitting up. I was totally sitting okay. up. Okay. And, and that's was... that's what I typically witness with other, yeah. So these binaural beats and all of these other meditations, they are designed to take your spirit to, to lift off. Okay. Well, it's exactly <laughs> what wow. happened. Exactly. Uh, but I, kept, I wanted to tell you that I felt peaceful. And when I uh, awakened to, was it this morning? I think it was this morning that I, I went into, I did my own meditation. I was going to come down stairs and listen because your meditations are on my computer. But I, I, I stayed I'm glad upstairs. to hear that. <laughs> I stayed upstairs and I meditated uh, from memory. Fantastic. And what I, what ended up, what part of it was that I saw Sekhmet. Oh. And okay. Sekhmet put a lion in my heart. Wow. And then as that lion was settling down, another one came. It was male and a female. Just in my heart. So wow. I don't know what all that means, but it just feels really like I I'm coming together. I'm having courage. I'm, I'm moving forward even though I had that lapse last night. So it's, I just keep on going. And when I was doing it from memory, I was feeling it really deep inside me, as opposed to, I got to meditate now and then I meditate. It, it was different. And you, I remember you saying one of our things, it's not about just going and meditating to this thing. It's about bringing it in and about feeling it, about really, integrating it and i can say that i felt that last night and this morning so that's a win i love it i just so love it talk about an integration you've graduated you are owning it yeah you are being it yeah you are feeling it yeah you are it's it's a body mind spirit integration that you are you know you're in your zone that's a zone that's a click that's a okay i got it right i got it yes it felt like i just totally shifted <laughs> 
Yeah, fantastic. I'm, I'm looking around, I go, what, what, what? <laughs> but everything's different. I feel different. I see different. It's a different from the differences that I'm, I'm feeling small differences all along this journey. And, and that's the thing. It's it doesn't all come immediately. Yeah. And and I think us coming together and checking in mm -hmm. and being reminded to notice the small stuff. We are focusing on the small stuff, the mo focusing on the small stuff that we're letting go. You know, the tree doesn't let go of all the leaves in one go. Mm -hmm. It's a gradual process. Then after two weeks, you go outside and there's no leaves on the trees. And you're like, what happened? I didn't even see that happen. Yeah. But if you pay attention every single day, you might have to go out there and rake if you're a real fuddy dud and want to get all the leaves off your lawn, right? But that's the point. And so we miss our journey because we're so distracted. And yeah. so you're slowing it down, marking off the calendar, so to speak, by us focusing day to day on this, backing it up, simplifying it, doing one simple practice a day. You can do more if you want, but that's all building for you. It's like building your muscle, right, Carly? She knows <laughs> all about this. She knows all about <laughs> look at her looking at me that is too funny <laughs> she is loving this little chat she said yeah. yeah you tell mama you tell mom i've been trying to tell her for a long time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh i love it okay we're we got that carly just knocked it off i knocked me out i just wanted to you know she's her eyes are just piercing yes she, 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 she. <laughs> so thank you carly for the amusement <laughs> yeah we like to raise our vibration any which way we can right yes. and all the whole idea is to stay on track carly not to get distracted <laughs> uh, we're practicing to stay focused carly and you're blowing it for us <laughs> yeah but she's diverting her attention a little bit here but I could also tell you that one of the things you've told me to do or told all of us in, in our teachings is about grounding. So I um, had a lot of housework to do. <laughs> so it was getting late. I had already tried to meditate. I said, well, I got to do this. And so I just grounded my myself, my house, my kitchen, everything. And then I was able to get the dishes done and the kitchen cleaned up. I was, because I thought you're too tired. Was, well, this gave me the energy. This, so I grounded. And this grounding works. And little synchronicities all week has been happening every time I do the grounding. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, uh, I feel that I'm well on my way to that one incredible thing. <laughs> oh, fantastic. See, you're feeling the momentum build, right? Mm -hmm. And, and it's get it builds your enthusiasm, it builds your excitement, you just know you're doing it, you're on track. And what you're doing is, you know, telling the universe, I'm ready, I'm ready to receive it, you know, bring it on. Yeah, that's so fantastic. And you know, I was reflecting, I was listening to a podcaster, very successful person. And they were saying, you know, I pro procrastinate too. And so they were going on and on. And I was witnessing their energy while they were doing it. I think she had to um, finish a manuscript for a book and she wasn't able to get to it. And what she was doing is take it. I mean, maybe you've done this before. Instead of doing what you're supposed to do, she started cleaning her fridge. She took everything out of the fridge, put it on the counter, and she started cleaning out the fridge shelves and making it clean, right? So the fridge was empty, you know, and she had everything on the counter and she wasn't able to sit down and do the manuscript. I was about to clean my oven the other day because I had made something that made a mess in it. Yeah. And I said, no, I'm going to wait. There's another time for that. But right now I've got a priority. So I was able to catch myself, right? But, and I was amused because when she told her story, I was like, oh, that's really funny because I had a similar experience. But, you know, you got a mess, you've got stuff to do. Come back to what's your priority? 
What yeah. are what's the one or the top three things that we're going to focus on today? And then focus on the step you're in, because that will take care of it uh, itself a little bit later. Yeah. So good for you. The grounding is perfect. See, that's a realistic, practical way of how we can employ it, how we can, um, I say, you know, in energetic terms, quantum physics is we're releasing the charge. We're releasing the buildup of energy, whether it's our own excitement or enthusiasm, or maybe it's interference that's just coming at us from, you know, we're bombarded from the noise of the world nonstop. You don't even have to have the TV on no. and, you know, things are coming through the, the lines, you know, you're afraid to open up your email going, you know, I'm going to be hit with another 50 emails every time I look. So I'll look at it at the end of the day. But grounding ourselves before we open the email, right? So if there is a shock or if there is something super exciting, we can pace ourselves instead of getting derailed and jumping into that when we've got to focus on our task. So that's a, a practical way. I really like how you're starting to integrate this. This is all part of what I do in my mastery mentoring is we start learning and applying these in deeper and deeper and deeper ways. So literally in 10 weeks, your life looks completely different. Yeah, yeah. And so that's fantastic. How are you doing with your um, clearing your, your mind or clearing the center of your head as I talk about? Your I'm focus. Doing, well, I don't know because I fell asleep last night. But I think I'm doing pretty good with that. Um, this morning, my mind started getting really full of all these things that I was thinking about for my job and what I'm going to do and all that. And so I just said, uh, I just started to say, okay. And I did my deep breathing. I, I did my meditation, like I say, from memory this morning. Mm -hmm. And it took a while to kind of come to my center but I did yeah fantastic yeah what I find is I start with the basic practices because when I sit and do the energy work and the meditations you know if anybody's looking for a quick and fast you know rinse and repeat and energy shower it's my stress buster that's on my website and you know that's a 15 minute quick drive through but i do that process almost every day and so now when i do it i'm in within a couple minutes I'm in a zone because I've, I, I'm programmed. I've got the same chair. I've got the same position. I do the repeat. And then what happens is I start to see priorities in my day or I need to see. So, but I'm not jumping into them. I'm seeing, oh, I like today. I didn't hear it in my meditation, but coming in the car, I went, oh, abracadabra. That's where we're going to start is with our word, the spoken word, and we're creating magic. We are manifesting. Abracadabra. And so, so, but it starts to be just that fast, right? And so I, I've got my priorities. I've got some topic talking points that I needed to do. And I realized, okay, there's some things that I've been putting off and I grounded this appointment that I needed to make. And, oh my God, then the woman that, you know, she couldn't even focus... She couldn't focus on the computer. The computer kept crashing. She couldn't get it. She put me on hold so long. I didn't know I was still on hold. So what did I do? I grounded her. I grounded the computer. I grounded the phone line. Yes, I grounded myself too again because I was, I was getting frustrated. Yeah. And um, well, she came back and of course there were computer, it's mercury retrograde, computer problems. Um, but it helped the process, you know, get the, the, the call complete and giving her my details and booking the appointment. So that's good, but that's everyday stuff. How, how I'm using it. Wow. That, yeah. That's helping me because, um, I will meet, I'll be confronted with a lot of craziness, <laughs> but it's primarily in the drive. I don't seem to get it at work, but, um, the drive is uh, fascinating, actually. <laughs> so uh, when I see the, the drivers become aggressive, um, in the past, I would get angry. Right, right now, I just, I just pray for them or myself or 
safety and thank God for safe drivers and stuff like that. So um, I see fewer and fewer of these crazy drivers. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, because you're not looking for the wrecks and you're not looking for the, the carelessness. You're looking well, for the safety. You're looking for people taking care and respecting each other. So, and staying in their lane, whatever that might be, you know, well, and I, I, I shared this yesterday in the call, you might want to listen to the replay, but I talk about the golden rose. So that's so, for instance, if I pass somebody that's had an accident, I just send them the gold rose, I don't rubber neck. I, I probably have to slow down like everybody else. But I ground the scene so that everybody there at the scene yes. can tend the the you know, situation properly grounded, focused, and that the person will get their care in the divine way. And I send them a gold rose. Okay. And that gold rose is a blessing. Now, I don't know what God has in mind for them. So it's not for me to decide. But I do send it and knowing that they're aligned with everything God intends for them. So, so that's that's a tool that you can use and quickly not divert your own energy going there going, oh, your heart goes to them and oh, I hope they're going to be okay. And oh, I hope their family's going to, you know what I mean? We, yeah. we go to all of those areas that are going to be changed as a result of their situation. Those of us who are healers and empaths. So for this is a way for empaths and sensitives to keep their energy in their own bubble right? Send that thought, send that abracadabra, red, the golden rose. Mm -hmm. And that's your magic. It's like your magic wand. Well, could I also send the golden rose to just reckless drivers who, who are in and wreck, but are just yes. And, and what I would do is, okay. So first things when in, in my intuitive mastery or my uh, mentoring life mastery, I, I hesitate to tell you to use these tools on other people. Okay, here's why. First, we've got to learn how to manage our own and we need to take care of ourselves, right? When you start shif shifting and changing your vibration, that will affect them automatically, first off. But second of all, we have, yeah, and that's enough to take care of is our own mess, okay? And our own responsibility. Now, those situations, like in, in our, um, in my mastery, we would practice, for instance, one of the students grounded, somebody was on their phone yapping really, really loud, and it was very annoying in the mall, right? Mm -hmm. And so they were going up the escalator behind this person on the phone. And so what they did was they grounded that person. And literally the person ended the call and turned around to see who was there. And so people will sense it. So you could do that if you can quickly just see them grounded. What I like to do more, I find it more effective and it takes less of my focus. When I'm on the freeway, I need to pay attention, right? right. Or even if, yeah. So I just imagine fireworks going off all around them. And what that does is it shifts the energy to get their awareness, to pay attention, and to perhaps slow down. Still up to them. So it's another way of handling. You could use both. There's no right or wrong. There's no have to. But I find that when there's chaos, when there's uh, issues, like let's say you're um, there's a problem person you're checking out at the grocery store and there's somebody that's got an argument with the cashier or there's an issue with the, with a price or something, I will just explode roses and mind my own business. Oh, okay. okay. Explode roses or fireworks or something. Basically it's like throwing a pebble in the pond and it sends ripples. It's right. just shifting the energy so that they can just snap out of their issue or find a solution, or they can shift. They can find the solution versus focusing on the problem. Because we all want the solution, right? We might be battling at your idea for a solution and my idea, or they're at odds. <clears throat> 
but we can find it much easier. We can get in the zone when we unplug the log jam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have fun. You know, I, I use these tools like I'm in kindergarten and playtime and, and just not being attached. My abracadabra moments, right? Yeah. My hocus pocus, call it what you want. I love it because driving down the freeway in really, really busy traffic in LA or San Diego, I would, I would be playing these psychic games all over the place. <laughs> Oh. I would, I, I openly admit that I have a heavy foot and I do like to travel fast. And so if I'm in that zone and I want to do that and people are blocking my way and they're driving in the number one lane, slow, I get annoyed. <laughs> I don't like that. So I will explode fireworks in front of their car and behind their car. Next thing you know, there goes the signal light. They change. <laughs> they see me coming. They let me go. And then they, funny enough, I've watched them go right back behind me. And um, so I, I play these games, right? Of course, I drive safely, Nicole. <laughs> of course. I do. I'm a safe driver. And so, <clears throat> but that's, I don't, you know, promote that you should be doing that. Do, 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 do. But that's... Um, my guilty pleasure okay and i play with my psychic tools every day all day so it becomes you know a playground it becomes a mirrors you know uh hog school of hogwarts <laughs> hogwarts school of magic okay i just dropped something <laughs> okay yeah. I, love it. I love it yeah and so think about how you can apply that you know, when situations, when we focus just on the grounding and make that real. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. use it for any accidents or reckless drivers or, you know, I was using it with this woman on the phone call this morning and her computer. And all it is is a visualization. It's a picture in your mind. It's a thought. And the more neutral you can become with that, the more playful we are the less attached we are to the outcome and the more likely it will create the positive results we're looking for. So again, back to our manifesting challenge. Again, we're trying to, you know, we have our one incredible thing that we're focusing on, but we're all along the way, releasing resistance, releasing our got to have energy, you know, and if I don't get it, then I'll be a screw up or I'm going to prove this doesn't work or, you know, whatever it is that we need to prove to ourselves, right? And so that's what we're doing is we're learning to build and trust the energy flow, to trust ourselves in our abracadabra abilities, our natural creative abilities, our natural manifesting abilities, you know, manifesting has become a real big buzzword and everybody goes off the rails when we talk about the secret. And some people say it works. And we talked about in previous calls about the vision boards and, and affirmations and a lot of these things. Those are fine. They're little tools, but they're not they're the whole thing. And being able to get that body, mind and spirit in aligned. You know, the work I've been doing is all about soul manifesting, soulful expression of who you really are. It's authentic manifesting. It's not just, oh, I need a Lamborghini because that'll put, you know, me on the map and my family will respect me finally. That's not the, the notion. I think that was, it sort of got a bad name and a lot of people misused it or decided it didn't work because of that, right? So again, I think coming into alignment, even let's say, you know, there was uh, Dr. Rebecca was her goal was to make 50,000 US dollars a month. Well, for some people, that's just really outrageous, right? And someone might say, well, why wouldn't she be happy with 5,000 or 10,000? Or what, why does it have to? It's her, her deal. She can make her game. And, you know, life is a game. Let's play it. And maybe she needs that stretch, right? And I love you, Dr. Rebecca. I'm just using that as an example. It's like, why, why are we holding ourselves back? It's just a number. They're just zeros. <laughs> you know, just add more if you want. 
but it's not the money that she's after. She's after the experience and the researcher position and how she's going to feel in being in alignment and integrity and following her soul's calling, what she's really good at, what she can help people at. That's the real goal. You see what I mean? It's a different journey. Yeah. Yeah, powerful. Yeah. When we come to that awareness and play and be gentle with ourselves and honor the steps. I think I posted in the in the Facebook group, you know, mm -hmm. focus on the step you're in. Just focus on that step. Right. And and you know, every day is a begin new beginning. Yeah. I feel like a student every day. Okay, how can I do it today? How can I make this fun? Even when it is a grind and you got to make some calls that you don't want to make. <laughs> right? Yeah. So let's see. Um, yeah, hey, Amira Hall. Geez, I forgot to turn off my ringer. Um, there was another thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, so yeah, the leaves letting go. And, you know, one thing that I found myself saying over the years, and I remember being in some real ugh, emotionally heavy times, feeling stuck, uh, overwhelmed, really anxious, and things not going fast enough for me. And frustrated with like, how many times do I have to go over this stuff with my mom or my dad or... Oh, not that again. Well, focus on the step you're in, but realize that we're taking a spiral staircase. It's not a straight up. And so there are various levels. You know, we reach a new level. Yeah, mom and dad stuff still come up for me, but it doesn't have the, the, I don't know, the two by four hit me. It doesn't have the the angst it doesn't have the the i don't know gut-wrenching trigger that it once did so it becomes less of an issue the more we just keep taking our steps it becomes something like oh yeah that happened and oh yeah that's a reminder i do have a pattern and i'm still working on i hold myself back i mean i don't know do you not hold yourself back I don't know there's a person on the planet that doesn't hold themselves back. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. We only create from the imagination that we are exposed with. So if you were raised in a real small town um, and, and never knew that you could travel internationally or that you could have an international stage and be a speaker around the world and everybody in your family were farmers or that's not that I, I mean I really respect farmers it's not that it's just that if you just had that small village mentality like I used with Tro and Noah Trev, Trevor Noah <laughs> um, is you know in in Africa South Africa at apartheid you know all they dreamt about back then or their imagination for manifesting was a extra room on their house that's where how they would grow or they could finally have enough money to you know have a driveway or to put an iron gate around their house that was the extent of their imagination for their tribe or their family Nobody ever grew beyond that. But he had a mother that trained him to think beyond apartheid, that there was life beyond what they were experiencing. So he had a whole different mindset. He actually dreamed of different things because he had those seeds that were planted for him. Some of us never had that. I didn't have parents that were openly encouraging me to look beyond. My mom was afraid of her shadow. You know, I was the one that at four years old, she told me that she was taking care of my baby sister and I was gone for the whole day. I was out looking for new friends. 
And so she never worried about me. And she even told me, she goes, you never needed me. You were, you were always independent. And I'm like, wait a minute, was that true? Or did you make it so? Or did I create that independence and courageous and, and curious mind because she wasn't available? See, it could be a double-edged sword, right? There are some good qualities in that, but did that make me less receptive to, let's say, ask for support? or less willing to think that I did need support, which is something that I'm also learning to do more and more, is I became so independent that that says, you know, people often say, well, you don't need help, Amira. Oh, yeah, I do. I just don't show that I do. Yeah. So, um, so that's, where we get to grow and stretch and it feels like ugly it feels uncomfortable and you know what sometimes it looks messy sometimes it doesn't look pretty it doesn't look like we thought it would look and so like I said to you I think a few weeks ago or when maybe 10 days ago it feels like weeks um just go for it let's just do it you know it, we don't know how it's going to look and that was my goal in having these live sessions with you guys i don't know how it's going to be or where we should focus and little by little i realized okay we need to streamline a little bit or let's start with a topic and so that really helped me but it was because i got my feet wet it's like oh, you can do this amir it's not that scary <laughs> yeah so have you found yourself feeling stuck or feeling uncomfortable with your stretches in the last week or two? Um, I don't know if we could call it uncomfortable, but it, it, yeah, I guess you could say that because I, I get comfortable in certain routines and to jump out of the routine is like, oh, well, I usually do this at this time. I know. You know it's, it's interesting. I know. Breaking free of old routines and patterns. And Eventually, I'll get there, but uh, for sure, I've been doing a little bit by a little. And well, it's, uh, and I was just thinking about the word commitment, about how um, in the past I knew what that was, but now it's for the last I don't know couple of years, I just kind of just went in a in a very neutral to almost depressed state until I met you and bringing that stuckness out because I got into a routine that I didn't practice these kinds. Well, and you know I want to add to that is that I think a lot of spiritually minded or people on the spiritual path often fall into that if we're we're not focused well some people are still focused on their career but still when the spiritual or the spiritual awakening part starts to kick in i know i went through a phase like that too and so it is go with the flow but we misunderstand that that doesn't mean not take action and that doesn't mean we're actually creating we're trying to create a new pattern of slowing down and focusing and listening on the inside so I think it's learning to have that balance or when we do it all of a sudden one way, then we go, wait, I'm lonely or I haven't had any social activity. What do you, my mind is getting slippery. I'm not remembering things or I, I've just lost interest. And then, you know, it's like a depression. What's depression? Stuck energy. That's all it is. That's all it is. All pain is stuck energy, whether it's emotional pain, physical pain, spiritual pain. So keeping our energy flowing and then having a list of things to do, keeping on focus, like what's that one thing? That's why I was sort of directed to, towards that. So I really appreciate you sharing that because I too have been in that zone. And so when we start with the little things for anybody who's listening to this and realizes, well, I am stuck. Okay. Well, what one thing can you do different? I don't know. Hang your tea towel on a different cupboard doorknob. Um, <laughs> take, take a different path to the park, right? If you go down one particular path all the time, go a different route, right? If you shop only at this store, try another one. 
right? If you only buy this particular brand, try, try another one. Um, what else could we do, Nicola? Um, if you if you say you have no time for meditation, set your clock half an hour earlier in the morning. And when that alarm gets off, get up. <laughs> Take a decision. Do something different than you would before. That's that adult in you taking charge. It's saying, I'm doing something different. I'm committed to having, I don't know what my one incredible thing is. I don't know what the hell I want right now. My life is in shambles and I feel like crap. Do <laughs> one thing closer to what you can get closer. I can't do that part for you. You know, I can do clearings. When I do a clearing, it's like a rocket ship, you know, turbo blast you into another orbit. But every, every, even when I work with people doing a series of clearings, we always start with the tools. So it's a teamwork. You're starting to learn how to apply them. I've been doing this for years because I know that I could do all of this. You can go to any kind of therapy. You know what? You want to lose weight. Well, you can't lose weight if you just have one salad. That's not going to happen, right? You got to be consistent. Right. You got, you can't, you know, reshape your body or build any muscle if you only go to the gym once. <laughs> you can't learn to drive a car if you only get in the car and turn it on. <laughs> you don't go anywhere, right? You don't learn the, the system of the road or study the book. We have to start somewhere, right? Carly, is she telling me my time is up? <laughs> <laughs> she definitely wants to be front row and center. <laughs> hi carly how are you pretty girl i love her coloring oh yeah so yeah doing one thing different and then every every day add on something else well i could do my hair different i could uh wear a different color maybe i've never you know it was interesting over the years i had this one lady i remember and um in the reading, I don't know why this is coming out right now, but let's 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 give it. Um, she only wore very, I don't know what's the word, conservative underwear. It was boring. <laughs> let's just say it was boring underwear, beige, and it, there was no frills, there was no lace, there was no feminine aspects to it, right? And I I asked her in the reading. I said. What what's going on with your underwear? <laughs> and so I said, you know what? Spirit wants you to go buy a lacy bra. Spirit wants you to buy some lacy panties. <laughs> and she was really uncomfortable with that. That <laughs> bugged her. Okay. And so that's the trigger. That's the pinpoint, right? That she wanted to express a version of her femininity but she was outwardly really, really afraid. Now I said, look, nobody's going to know you've got some lacy panties on, but you and me, and I won't even know <laughs> unless you told me, right? right? But here's the deal. It's an inside job. Sometimes we need a little nudge to go, you know what? I do feel pretty and special when I wear either that color or, or, or you know, I was never a lacy person, although today I've got a lacy blouse. But see, that's not showing anything. It's not like super yeah, seductive, right? So uh, some of us have these interpretations or these beliefs or these pictures of what that means, you know? And so she had whatever mental beliefs that maybe she saw that as, uh, you know, a hooker or somebody that was not appropriate. For her, she made it inappropriate or didn't um, appreciate that feminine aspect or acknowledge that femininity with her. So there's a long history, obviously, we could go into about that. We all have our, our, our beliefs and our hidden uh, unconscious notions around that. 
So for her, I don't know if she ever did that, but I remember her putting on a camisole or she did it something different. She, she wore a lacy camisole with some lace trim or something. So that was for her, her trigger and her level of comfort where she could go with that. So, you know, it might be something secret like that for you. You know, what's stepping you out of your comfort zone just because you're treating yourself different doesn't mean you're going to go looking for, you know, a one night stand or get on to grinder or something like that. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> so yeah, those things perk us up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Carly, you're beautiful and you know it, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah, the the rest of us are trying to catch up with you, Carly. Loving her, knowing how beautiful we are. Yeah, so that's so great. Well, listen, I was there anything else you wanted to add or comment or share? On my dishwasher today. Oh, yay! Congratulations. That's a that's a win. Hey, I want to add another thing here. You brought that up. So, how are you going to celebrate? Your new dishwasher. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> okay, great. Well, one, I'm celebrating with you right now. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, a lot of times we manifest something, we create it, we draw it to us. But have you ever shared something with someone and they're less than excited about it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a cold shower. Yeah. And so what we end up doing is not sharing these things. I know that's been a pattern in my own life. Mm -hmm. um, you know that what I see in, in the energy work is that people go into competition. Oh, that's really nice for you. Like I'm going to Egypt, right? Well, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I wish I could go. Oh, God, how come how come she's going again? Or, you know, whatever it is in their own life is going on. They aren't excited for us, but they're thinking about themselves. So there's two things. It puts energy of competition on you or energy creates a literally a block. So I always counsel or coach you to say, one, to be careful who you share your wins with, right? Because not everybody will be receptive. Mm -hmm. And then when we haven't yet created it, like, Let's say you have a goal, like Dr. Rebecca's, to make fifty thousand a year. Well, most people would just go, "Oh, that'll that's a crazy dream," or "Oh, what? A, she's too greedy," or whatever idea they're having in their head, they may not say it. It's like putting little pinpricks in her balloon, oh. right? So that's what it's doing. It's deflating her goal or her momentum. So you want to be careful. That's why I created the manifesting, the art of manifesting miracles or the art of manifesting mm -hmm. in, in um, the Facebook group. So we can share our goals and our wins with people that can celebrate it with us and are on the same page, right? And that can really validate that amazing creative ability that you just did. You demonstrate and you deserve it. There's your femininity running right i think you should run a take all the silverware out of your drawer and 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 all the glasses from the cupboard and put everything in the dishwasher and run it just for the hell of it i'm gonna do it yes i, I definitely plan to do that <laughs> so. i got some i'll bring over <laughs> oh. yeah so that's the way win celebrate be careful who you share it with mm -hmm. right or create and find the people that can support you in your wins. And also, um, that's why in the manifesting uh, challenge, I share with you the tool of being able to clear off the energy of your mock-ups, of your creations, of what you're manifesting. Mm -hmm. We have an energetic quantum tool to clear off any energy blocks, any interferences, any obstacles, so that we have smooth sailing. Okay. Yeah. So don't forget that. So congratulations. That was a long way to say, you know, I'm, you. I'm grateful that you shared that. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that prompt. And thanks for sharing your win. I think it's so great. I got the hiccups now. I think it's time to end. <laughs> All, All right. right. So, Thank you. 
You're so welcome. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Yes. And I will be here again till following the, till the 30th. So every day, 10 a.m. Uh, no, yeah, Central Time. So 11 Eastern Time. And we will start the Manifesting Challenge live, the live re new um, guided uh, practice will start at 5.30 Eastern Time on Monday, the 26th. So I hope you can join us. If you're just listening to this for the first time, go ahead and sign up and you can join us live. Okay. So, hey, have a great weekend, Nicola. And thanks again for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Keep that magic going. <laughs> Abracadabra. <laughs>